So we are in the studio again, and we flew back our good friend, Kevin Kinsella. You may know him from John Brown's Body, but you got to know him from this album, Riding Higher Still. Check it out. It's really, really good stuff. He's uh, playing a little scratch guitar right now on my wife's old school ovation. You may recall that from the cover of uh, Onigne. So this is what we're doing today. One second. Um, I, we are working on a song on the Lord's Prayer. Don't know if it's going to make it on the album yet, but I want to show you guys kind of what we're doing. We were listening to some old school Bob Marley. You know, reggae has this kind of play, play, typical reggae. Right? Just just straight up, chank, chank, or chank, chank. It's pretty pretty straightforward, and all of Christ Fari's reggae has been like that for over the years. But before reggae solidified maybe yeah before it solidified they were hunting and pecking a lot and if you listen to old school bob marley stuff um name lee some perry. of the albums well, lee, lee, perry lee scratch perry production soul rebel soul Pack rebel and those records. yeah so we were listening to some of that and i've always been listening to that over the years and said i want to make something like that now i know you've recorded stuff like that on your album right oh yeah yeah and uh, so I was like, you know what? I really want to do something that's, that's just not the typical cliche. Chank, yeah. chank, chank. And so here's what we got so far. Okay, I'm just going to give you just a rough sketch of one piece at a time. And then I'll show you what we're going to track right now. So we have just drums, right? Oops, that's too much going on. Chaos. Okay, so this is the drum beat, right? So we got this tip, typical drum beat. And then we add some bass. And here's bass. Ba -ba -da -ba -doom, boom, 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 right? And then we add, add. The organ kind of hitting with it. It's kind of fun, just funky chicken style. Here we go. And then we, we had this, this other bubble. Right, just hitting on the... And then we added the... the this is the classic reggae bubble. Oh, ah, oh. And then we had him... Throw down guitar. Listen to this. Right? So we just got this whole thing. Now what you're gonna do, now you wanna actually do something on the beat. Yeah. It's gonna it's gonna create this kind of train vibe. So um here we go. Let's Highly track it. Percussive, yes. Very percussive, yes, yes. Here we go. And let's track it. Oh, and I'm gonna give you a click now. We're gonna have to turn on the click. So we know what the heck's going on. One, two, three, and. It's 
it's been a long process in the studio so far. And we are on our final day of demoing, we think. We have, as of today, amassed 33 songs for this album. So here's the problem. It's not an album. It's two albums now. I officially announce, as of today, that Reggae Worship Anthems is now two albums. It's impossible to fit. Those songs are just too much good stuff. So um, we're tackling the last song. It's a song that we've touched on as a chorus in our set over the last two years. Can you guess what it is? I'm here in my living room with Kevin Kinsella. Kevin, tell me what bands you've been in. John Brown's Body. Well, it started with Tribulations, my first group that I started when I was 15. John Brown's Body and uh, Kevin Kinsella. Did have a, I did have a doo-wop group when I was 12 years old called the Oreos. The Oreos? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. What you playing right there? It's a mighty small guitar you got there. Just as easy as guitar. No. <laughs> so tell me this. Uh, the first time I met you, we were talking a lot about faith. Uh, what? Who is Jesus to you? And and why? Why do you write songs about Christ? Well, Jesus Christ is the Savior, you know, in the light of the world, the way, the truth, and the light. I grew up in it, you know what I mean, and it was a gift given to me by God, of course, but nurtured by my parents, my grandparents, and my brothers and sisters. And I grew up just the front door of my church was just a, across the field from my backyard. Nice. Yeah. So it was a big part of my life. You know, we'd all get together and all the kids in the neighborhood would play football in that field and ride our bikes around the church. So it was special. What, what was your uh, favorite hymn growing up? Anything specifically? Wow. Well, my favorite hymn is, uh, I love the peace prayer of St. Francis, make me a channel of your peace. Nice. You know, I like, I love St. Francis. They, he followed in the footsteps of Christ. They say of all the, the saints, he was most in tune with the, the teachings My of Jesus. My favorite saying of him was, everywhere you go preach the gospel, use the words when necessary. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so, so the most overt song that you wrote with John Brown's body. Yes. What was it? Do you know it? Can you? We gonna win them, ja, ja. Music is our weapon. We gonna win them, ja, ja. Hold on, yeah. Did anyone hear the greatest love song? Jesus and the disciples wrote that one. Oh, yeah. Did anyone hear the greatest love song? Just sang that out up on the cross. That's yeah. the best real, real hot, real, real cold. God don't like the partial song. You ask me, it is who I mean. Root of David, bright as the morning star. Oh, we gonna win them, ja, ja. Only on the music, tell them King David sent I. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> That's so cool. Now, you've been talking to me for years back and forth. You came and visited us when I was preaching at a church one time. I've been going backstage at your shows forever, giving you uh, the CDs of our music and stuff. Yeah. And, and you, you, you kept hitting me up saying, man, let's write together. And so on this album, I thought, who better? I mean, I admire your root sound. I admire the, uh, the songwriting skills and your heart. And how has it been for you? Writing this week? Us, writing for oh, us. Oh, amazing. 
You guys are monsters of production. You're just turning it out. You're on fire, you know? You and I are sitting there. We've got a Bible in our hand. We got Justin on keyboards, and he's a prodigy. I mean, he's just amazing. He's like, uh, he's the Hawaiian Stevie Wonder, you know what I mean? It's like... <laughs> Oh, it's, yeah, occasionally we would like we would sit down for a Bible study and a song would come out. Instead of sitting down for a song and a Bible study would come out, it was a, it was like it was really really cool. Some of the some nice. of the messages we touched on, some of the things that and that inspired you in the last week that we talked about. Anything stand well, out? Psalm fifty one. You know, we we're working on that today. The clean heart. Um beautiful things a lot of come as you are you know come to me just the, the intimacy of this record has really been touching me and um just how prolific you are really really touched me well what i what i love most is just how much family is part of it all you know your mom and dad your daughter your wife the wives are there mm -hmm. part of the band the children are playing and just it's so beautiful so integrated you know 100% genuine. Christafari is the real deal. I mean, it's just like they're walking the talk, you know what I mean? It's like the fellowship, the love, the gospel-centric nature of it. Really impressive, you know what I mean? Now, how does it for you coming from a it mainstream... Makes me, oh. It makes me feel um, emboldened, you know what emboldened. I mean? And strengthened. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, did God teach you anything in, in, in our time together here? Oh, the... the, the the truth is alive. The truth lives. You know what I mean. The, the gospel is is a living thing, and it's being lived here. And oh, amen. it's good to see that. You know? How now? How does there's this... a lot of uh, you know wolves in sheep clothing yeah. out there. Yeah. False preachers. You know. Mm -hmm. How you, you have done more clubs than we have, obviously. You've done a lot. I've done a lot of the wine houses. You've done. <laughs> <laughs> you've done all the different festivals, all the different things. I mean. Some of your music has has been been you know played in places that our music hasn't reached. Yeah. How does how is it contrast? I mean, these are all like like right here. These are all like mainstream record albums that yeah, kind of inspired that both us. Both you and I years. grew up on. This yeah, album. we grew up on on all this vinyl here. We have Steel Pulse over there, so we have that same background. And then and then in the garage behind me, we have just all this gospel reggae. How is it for you seeing a contrast between? The mainstream and and what we're doing here. I mean, because I'm well, listen, sure some people are tripping I, on it. As I've always said, is like real reggae music is the Bible being sung. That's where it started. Ooh, rich. Real reggae music is is the gospel. That has always been the gospel. You know what I mean? It's like um, it's the Psalms of King David in this time. Mm. It's the King's music. You know what I mean? King David. I mean, King David was a, an amazing songwriter. You know what I mean? He was a warrior. He was a king, he was a leader, but he was also was a prolific songwriter, you know, and he was the one who soothed Saul mm. because Saul was the first king of Israel, as you remember, and God said to Israel, well, why do you want a king? You have me. And so Saul was miserable, of course, because it, it was a terrible job, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so he had young David come in and play his, his harp mm. to soothe his mind, you know mm. what I mean? So that's a great story, but he was the chief musician, you know, and um, and that's what reggae is. Reggae is from that lineage of you know Solomon as David's son, you know what I mean. And reggae is it's, so the king. Yeah, it's king's music. The king. Regal. It comes from the word Re 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 Regis, yeah, regent. Regent. Yeah. 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 So yeah, the gospel, you know, and all the reggae artists from Jamaica are steeped in the Bible, you know, the, the roots reggae artists coming out of the, the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, you know, it started to slip away from that, but I mean, the knowledge of scripture in Jamaica and is, is you know, it's woven into the fabric of the society, you know, it's one nation under God, under the Bible, you know what I mean, which is impressive, mm. which maybe, maybe in the United States, it might have been that way a hundred years ago, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. People don't go around quoting scripture just no, in the grocery don't. store, which it's is which popular. is a shame. It's a shame. <laughs> it's a, we're we're poorer because of it. Mm, I like that. You know what I mean? But in Jamaica, it's just it's coming out of everyday yeah, expressions. Yeah. It's in every you know it's every in street corner figure, of the church. figures of speech. You know you're mm. talking about like wise mm. as a serpent. You know what I mean? Humble as yeah, a dove. Yeah. You know things like that. You know wow. it's all coming from the Bible. You know. And that's, that's awesome. the thing. It's like people like for years were like I remember being a kid and people were like. 
oh yeah, you know, wisdom is better than silver and gold. It's like Bob Marley said that. I'm like, no, <laughs> the Bible <laughs> said that's proper. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't gain the world and lose your soul. Yeah. Wisdom is better than silver and gold. I mean, that's his lyrics are just right from the Bible. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And and a lot of people don't don't even realize that. Awesome. Well, so and unfortunately, I think. You know, when the when Jamaica was a tiny, you know, God centric island looking out on the world, as it kind of had a had almost like a a humble but very wise perspective. And I think maybe mm-hmm. when the world started, like when reggae attention came to Jamaica, mm-hmm. you know, there's many factors, but the message changed. You know what I mean? And the message changed to be more about like um, drugs and sex and mm. degrading factors of society that really aren't you know they're not life-giving but life-taking you know mm. what i'm saying which is sad but that's what happens i mean any anywhere something good has happened satan will rush in mm. so you have to be on the guard you know what i mean <laughs> you know what i'm saying i do, I do. And that I do. Go, that's yeah. that goes for us too you yeah. know what i mean especially as performers or yeah. as leaders or singers of the word you know what i mean if you start you know you know there's a lot of temptations and vanities and so forth. How do you keep from that when you're on tour doing your own stuff? Well, you must bow down to God, you know what I mean? I heard that you read your Bible a lot on tour. Yeah. Definitely always have a copy of the Bible (laughs) nearby. A lot of time. That's how I like to spend my time in the van, you know, for years. We just try and read Bible and pray. You know what I mean? That's awesome. That's where the good song ideas come from. Yeah, man, that is. The stuff that lasts, right?